I'm speaking with PV Wagner. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Very good. Good. Well, I want to say I've been a uh, Rage fan for a long time, going back to Execution Guaranteed. But actually, the first time I ever heard you was on Doomsday News. Oh, oh right. Yeah. The first or the second version? First one. The, the one was um, before the storm, right? Before the storm, exactly. And then yeah. I was, and then I was like, okay, well, I got to pick up whatever rage I can find in my store, and I found Execution Guaranteed. And then when Perfect Man came out, which by the way is a perfect album, you and Manny Schmidt just—I mean, the music is incredible. Um, that's that was <laughs> I played that all summer, and I've got to ask you the song, Supersonic Hydromatic. Is that at all expired? Is that at all? Is that at all? It's inspired by um, by the movie. Oh God, uh, Time Bandits. No, no, no. Because there's a scene in there where they have all this like crazy. Have you ever seen the movie? No, I haven't seen. It. Oh, you've never seen it. Oh, you really should check it out. It's a really good movie from the early '80s. Um, what's what's the title? Time Bandits. Time okay. Bandits. Okay, Sean, Time Bandits. Sean, of course. I've seen Time Bandits, okay. okay Sorry, great. maybe I didn't understand. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. In right. Time Bandits, there's a scene where the wife has all this, like, I don't know, this the dishwasher and the vacuum sweeper and all the stuff. It's supposed to be, like, the greatest technology, and all it does is backfire. And it just reminds me of supersonic, hybromatic, you know, be a real progress fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this was a, a hidden influence or so, maybe because I saw the film, but also in these times, Maybe this just backed up in my head or so, but it was not uh, like I saw this and, and this inspired me directly to write a song like this. However. <laughs> Have you ever played Supersonic Hydromatic live? Well, <laughs> you asked I've me never things. seen any example of it. Actually, maybe one or two times or so. Not very often, definitely. That's a good song. You should revisit it. You're revisiting so many songs in this on this new EP, you know, it might be something to consider. <laughs> yeah, if so that I would do it as many. <laughs> I got to ask you, after a 40-year-plus career, going back to the, even the Avenger days, how do you remember all those lyrics? Because you have written some great lyrics, <laughs> and some very spiritual, very motivational lyrics. Of course, I don't remember all of them, you know. When <laughs> When we uh, put stuff in the in, in, a, in a live set or so that we haven't played for a longer time or so, I have to relearn everything, you know, every fucking note, every fucking word. This is too much, you know. I don't know how many songs I release over the years. It must be around 600 or so. I don't know. I have actually actually no clue. But this is way too much to keep it all in this little skull. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm spreading the plague. I see you revisited Price of War 2.0, but that goes back to Black in Mind, right? Right, yeah, yeah. So, this was recorded actually when we uh, got Gene and Stefan, the guitar players from uh, this actual lineup, and when we uh, introduced them to the band um, and, and to the fans, we wanted to have something that they can hear and see, you know. So we did a kind of a press uh, kit before, and then we recorded just this song, also with a, with, I think, with a little video or so with it to um, introduce them to the fans or so, you know. But it was never out on on a uh, physical release so far, you know, so we introduced, uh, included it to the EP. <clears throat> kind of curious, you guys released that amazing single for Age of Reason, the Zardonic remix, um, and you even did a video <laughs> for it, which is, it's just, you did such a great version, well, I guess he did a great version of remixing that song. I'm surprised yeah, you didn't yeah. put that on Spreading the Plague EP. Uh, this was uh, because of legal problems. You know, this legal is two problems. different artists, and uh, if you mix this up, you know, this is a bit too much. Uh, and SPV didn't want to do this, and you know, because of these legal things. But in general, of course, it's uh, not a bad idea. You know, Federico, the the guy that uh, that is Zadonic, you know, he's a, a very long time friend from us, and he lives right next to our studio. <laughs> And um, actually, he, he uh, was involved in uh, the pre-production of the last album, recording okay. my vocals for the for the for the pre-production versions, and so he had everything in, anyway on his computer already. And he uh, was just like, "Oh, let me do a a, a a remix of this one." Yeah, why not? You know, <laughs> and he's well, like, a, like a, with this one. 
it's almost like a techno version of rage and it really works somehow <laughs> in a way it works if you're open-minded and you you know uh, you know and uh, kind of uh, um accept also other music styles or something it's a nice version of course if you hate techno i wouldn't recommend to fan of techno, <laughs> but i like it when huh? i like it when they can take a heavy metal song and you know add a little bit of techno to it and you know remix it and it, it, it just it, works i think it was, not his, great. it was not his first metal remix i think he did already a couple of metal remixes huh. he's, a, he's a fan of this music you know <laughs> good so it's only been a year since Resurrection Day, and you guys have already got another EP. Are you guys constantly writing, or? Uh, this EP was already planned together with Resurrection Day. We recorded oh. everything in, in, a, in the same session, and uh, we already had, had the plan to release an EP a year later, you know. Um, but actually, we're constantly writing, and we are already writing for the for the future album, for the 40th anniversary, you know, we celebrate in 2024, and we are working on a, on a double album for this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we have already about, let's, I think it's around 20 numbers, 20 new songs, you know. We're in the pre-production <laughs> phase of God at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, and I also uh, working on a, on a book on a uh, on a band biography of the band, <clears throat> coming all out uh, in two years. Oh wow! Are you writing that? Are you having? It's a biography or an autobiography? It's a uh, it's basically the rage story, you know, which is of course also my personal story. Right. And, uh, so far, at the moment, I'm writing alone, and uh, maybe I get someone involved a bit later, you know, to. Uh, correct these things a little bit. I'll get it a bit, a bit more in shape, you know. But at the moment, already not at the moment. And since since more than a year already, I'm writing all the, all what keeps what what comes to my mind and all my memories that I have from my childhood on till today. <laughs> now, spreading the plague, the title track and the lyrics for that is that, and even the cover art is that inspired by Corona? And nope. okay, it has nothing to do with that at all. No, no, spreading the plague. This is like uh, hum humankind is a plague, you know. This is yeah, planet. it says you, you, we ourselves are the plague. I love that line. We, we are the virus of the planet, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that it absolutely, does. Absolutely <laughs> makes sense. And you mentioned your, your guitarist, uh, Stefan Weber, who's currently in Scanner and played in a band I loved back in the day called Regicide. How did you get him into the band? Oh, he's an old friend of mine since a long okay. time already. He lives, we, you know, we all live pretty near together now, you know. Also, Gene just uh, lives uh, 10 minutes away from me. So we can see uh, whenever we want, you know, it's not a problem. We can work in face-to-face, uh, -face, you know. So <laughs> this makes it kind of easy. <clears throat> and it, it was kind of, uh, I don't know why I never worked with him already before, <clears throat> but um he was free for it. He, and uh, first, at first, it was in 2020, I think, when Marcus was still in the band, um, and uh, he was uh, he moved back to Tenerife where he once came from. You know, Tenerife is uh, an island near to Africa, right. which is uh, really a, a different continent. You know, so it was. Uh, and then the pandemic uh, started, and uh, it was a big lockdown. And we were asked to do a, a, a little streaming show for the Metal Hammer magazine over here. And, uh, of course, we couldn't get Marcus over here, you know, because it was not easy, not not possible to fly him in or so. You know, it was, he couldn't get out there anyway. He couldn't get out of his apartment, you know. It was forbidden to go on the street. So we asked Stefan if he would, like, ju just jump in so we could uh, play this little streaming thing, you know. And um, so the idea was uh, already at this point to involved Stefan in the band then, you know. And then when Marcus left, we also had to have to replay, had to re replace him, and then we found Gene. This is all two and a half years already ago. <laughs> well, it's good they have the proximity that you guys can be face-to-face, -face and you can record face-to-face, -face and you can rehearse face-to-face, -face and there's not so much distance. Because yeah. after a while there, you did have some uh, serious foreigners in the band. Well, I guess your drummer is still from um, another continent. But still, I mean, that's good that you have proximity with your guitarist and everything. Now, you mentioned that you're writing an autobiography. So obviously, you're going back to four decades, going back to the Avenger days. I recently picked up a remaster of a, a Prayers of Steel, and it's on Dr. Bones Lethal Recordings. Is that your <laughs> label? That's my own label, yeah. <laughs> I kind of thought so, because yeah. I couldn't find anything about it. So, 
Um, and you have reissued and remastered a quite a number of the Rage catalog with tons of bonus tracks. And, and we're, we're still on it. You know, we, the next thing will be in December. Secrets in a Weird World will come out as a wow. double um, double vinyl and also as a uh, um, d- double CD with uh, shitloads of demos and unreleased stuff, you know, as absolutely exclusively and with the original cover. Which uh, cover wasn't and, the three of you guys just standing no, there? No, no, no. This this was not the original cover that we wanted to have. This was Noise Records back then. You know, they <laughs> in this year they had like I don't know the the the, the, the boss of, of um, Noise Records, Carl Walterbach. He had yeah, a Carl kind Walterbach. of weird idea in this year that it must be band shots on the cover. You know, he did it <laughs> for Creator. He did it for Celtic Frost. Uh, yeah, for Cabaret. All these albums that came out in this year, they had band shots on, you know. And we had an, uh, another cover, you know, we made from Joachim Lütke also uh, in, in the same way like like Perfect Man was, you know, same artist. <clears throat> and uh, I, already, I already had the test printing before, you know, and I was pretty sure that it would come out like this. And then uh, when I saw the final product, I was quite shocked, you know, like, what the fuck? Where's our cover, you know? <laughs> and then, yeah, then was back then in the 80s, you know, there was no respect for artists, you know. Well, yeah. Uh, the, the label perfect. bosses were the big artists, the big creatives, you know. This <laughs> perfect man set the precedent for that that iconic character that you've used ever since. Exactly, the sound chaser. Sound chaser, okay. That's mm-hmm. what you call it based on that album. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I look forward to seeing that. Um, I've only got the Avengers so far because I, I bought a bunch of Rage remasters about 15 years ago that had a bunch of bonus tracks like Perfect Man and Trapped uh, and all that stuff like that. And, I remember. Yeah. I remember. These were, the, these were uh, from, um, uh, what was the company, the, the the one that bought Noise Records um, from, from England. Fucking hell, they are not existing anymore. I can't, can't even remember gun? the label name. Was, was it G-U-N? Sanctuary, Sanctuary, I think. Sanctuary, Sanctuary. okay. Uh, Rex Marlowe, Sanctuary, you know. They had, uh, they had done re-releases of the old material back then. But uh, uh, since seven years or so, I have all the rights back for my old stuff. And now I'm doing my back at a look on my own, you know. Now, is Refuge on hiatus? Or, I mean, you guys put out a Refuge album about five years ago. Um, is there still plans to do more with Refuge? We are do, definitely we will do some more live shows next year, and uh, I don't know if you want to do another album or so. It's not really necessary for us, you know. This is just a little a little fan band for us, you know. We just right, right. We just like to play some shows here and there. We would meet sometimes, play play a few of the songs, have a barbecue, and have some beers. You know, this is not really like <laughs> a professional band or so, you know. <laughs> right, but it does go all the way back to the first five noise albums. Right. Well, I guess, okay, yes, after execution guaranteed, but the Manny Schmidt era is definitely. Exactly, you know, the Refuge era. <laughs> yeah, the Refuge era. Well, the song Refuge and the whole Refuge era, mm-hmm. yeah. But that's, that's you know, that's good stuff. I and mean, that's how I really dug into you with like the Perfect Man, Secrets in a Wild World, Trapped, all those, all those albums. There's so many I can't even keep up. But I kept up, I followed you all through the 90s too. I mean, I, it's Black in Mind and you know, of all those albums, just, you know, and I would get the special editions just to get the Iron Maiden cover or just to get the Judas Priest cover. <laughs> it's all out. It's all out. If you I know it is now. Price, it was expensive of... back in the 90s <laughs> in the U.S. So if you want to just want to listen to it, you find it on Spotify. It's on the on one of these uh, deluxe versions or so. And it's also out on vinyl and, and on CD, of course. So... Maybe you have to order it through Amazon or so. Yeah, yeah, that's how I was. I was actually able to get um, uh, the Avenger was through Amazon. So right. So all the other stuff is also available. So, but the Secrets in the Real World, I probably want to get for sure because that's such a great yeah, album. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll, I, to this day, I still wonder what talk to grandpa's about. I mean, was it some kind of seance? Was it, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a seance. Or... You know, it's this kind of seance, you know, like. Uh, we are just getting in contact with the ghost from beyond, you know. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit funny, man. You know, it's, yeah, it's very tongue in cheek. You know? Obviously, I'm making fun of it. <laughs> right, but it's very tongue in cheek. But to this day, I still, you know, anytime someone says like, "Well, talk to Grandpa," talk to Grandpa. <laughs> it's amazing how some of these songs just stick with you. And it's definitely, I'm perfect, man, from start to finish, from wasteland to the very end. In pilgrimage and all that stuff, I that that album just totally sticks with me. I have so many great memories, 
you know. That's why I say I don't know how you keep, you know. I did meet you on the uh, very first 70,000 tons of metal cruise. I actually got you confused with Juan Garcia because you kind of from Agent Steel because you mm. kind of both look alike. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and that's when you had, um, oh, uh, oh, what's his name? Gosh darn it. The other guitarist for a while. Um, yeah, Marcus. No, no. Uh, uh, what, you, you mean the Russian guy, Victor Smolsky? Yeah, Smos the Russian guy, Victor Smolsky, yes. yes so yeah. Victor, the Sound Chaser album uh, guitarist. Right, right, right that's it. <laughs> right, right. And I kind of helped you would have played some of the older stuff, but you still do a good mix of, of, of the 90s, the early 80s, you know, and as well as whatever current album you're putting out, so. Of course, we're still having the old songs in our live set. <clears throat> yeah, that's important because you got fans that have been following you for I know, I know. <laughs> it's so always long. recommended. All the stuff is always recommended. <clears throat> so, you're, so you're saying these the EP, these songs were written back when the Resurrection Day album was being recorded. So these aren't brand new songs. This is just a new EP to kind of hold us over until you said a double disc coming out of new material? Yeah, we have already like, 20 new songs or so for a double album. We're still writing. We're still uh, working on the pre-production. It's still like, um, I don't know when the production should be finished by next year, October or so. Uh, the release is planned for, let's say, April or so, 24. 24? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, do you still ever work with Lingua Mortis in the orchestra, the Lingua Mortis? Yeah, there's also some uh, some shows, some uh, concerts planned for next year and also for 24 for the anniversary. So this have is you ever had, <laughs> Have you ever had any plans? I mean, I know it's difficult and I know the visas and everything like that, but to actually tour the U.S.? Yeah, we are working on this since a while already, but um, we, um, my, my manager was just there last week in, a, in, a, in the States and they met all the big agencies and um, yeah, there's, uh, there's interest in the band, but the problem is that it's really immense expensive. Exactly. At the moment, the working visa would be, uh, with all the costs, it would be around 20, uh, 30,000 uh, US dollars to just bring us in the country, you know. Which is a big sum. You, know, you, you haven't made any dollar uh, <laughs> uh, by just getting the band in. You know, just uh, you're already in a big minus. You know, <coughs> so this is <clears throat> this is one of the first problems we have to solve. You know, and um, however, it's in the planning. We are we are having already a few partners over there that uh, think about how we can how they can make it real. You know, how they can make it happen. I cannot say when it's going to be right, but right we're really right. working on it because we need to uh, find new markets of course to for touring and uh, you know russia and ukraine you know that's a big war in the moment here in europe you know <laughs> you heard about yeah. and the, these were important markets for the for for rich you know uh, that we can obviously forget in the future you know also it's uh, for we have always, always been touring japan you know this is also since two and a half years now it's impossible to, you still can't get in there you know so we need to find new markets you know to tour <clears throat> and of course it would be a, a dream it would be perfect to uh, get over to the states and play there you know but like i said it's a logistical problems at the moment but we're working on it <laughs> well, that's good to hear and it's, it's quite possible maybe you could work out a package with some other German bands. I've talked to several German yeah. bands uh, yeah. who would really like the, to come to the U.S. The the agencies uh, that we talked with, they think the the best thing would actually be to uh, to get a support slot with a bigger band in America. <clears throat> that would be the first step, you know, that they see. Like an open, like an opening for a bigger band. That's like maybe like opening for like Sabaton or opening for a bigger band on another big label or something like that nature. Whatever, yes, yeah. <clears throat> or even a current, you know, label mate like Sodom on SPV or something like that. Um, uh, we just talked to the agent of Saxon from America. I think Saxon. might be an idea. I don't know, you know, this is... <laughs> right, yeah. No, I know it's on the air, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying I, 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 I know a lot a number of people who like on, you're on their bucket list it's like oh i'd love to see rage live i've never seen rage live and it's like <laughs> i saw him live twice 
how did you see him live twice? I'm like, well, on the very first 70,000 tons of metal cruise. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I was also, on, you know, on that bucket list was Sodom and several other bands that you probably never get to see in the U.S. So, you know, that is, that is important. And yeah, you're right. Russia has always been a huge uh, market, just like UDO. It's been a huge market for rage. But I guess right now, politics would dictate that. <laughs> That's probably not a I, smart move. I don't see this market ever to come back, you know. <laughs> And it's it's definitely the politics have definitely changed. Yeah, now, I, the world politicians they don't they make it hard for the musicians, you know, <laughs> make it hard for the bands. <clears throat> make it, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, even the king has lost its crown. I can't help but think of. I mean, I know that's not what it's written for, but I can't help but think in American politics and. <laughs> <laughs> it's on all these corrupt politicians, all right. <laughs> yes, and it's like I can think of a certain king who's lost his crown, <laughs> but I know it's like it's probably other countries as well that fit that description too. So, <laughs> exactly. So, as, 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 as a lyricist, you have been a lyricist for everything rage oriented since the very beginning, right? Yeah. So you have written all the words for all these fantastic rage songs. For the past four decades there's two songs that i haven't done, done the lyrics there's one is prayers of steel that was done by uh alf Meyer, one of the guitar players in the avenger lineup and the other one is living my dream that was done by mike Turana. i think this is on oh, the drummer but, mike yeah, Turana, yeah. The US. yeah mike Turana. it's on unity i think living on my unity. Dream. okay mm -hmm. that's okay. His, so it's two songs in all in all these 40 years that i haven't written <laughs> Otherwise, the majority, we will say, has been written yeah, by people. 99.99999%. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And you got to wonder, what can be your inspiration after all this time continuing to write? Because you don't really write concept albums. I mean, you write concept albums like Sound Chaser and stuff. As far I did as that, twice, yeah. Right. Well, th three times, I did, yeah. Three times. Well, yeah, it wasn't 13. Uh, no, it's, a, it's Ghost, it's um, Sound yeah, Chaser, and it's uh, the Lingua Mortis Orchestra album. <clears throat> but it's not, no, it's not, I mean, you don't really like find a, like a political theme or a war theme or a history theme to write about. So what inspires you to keep writing all these really catchy and inspirational and motivational and thought-provoking lyrics? I just basically life, you know. I'm just <laughs> interested in a lot of things and... <laughs> This inspires you. <laughs> and you definitely, seem, sorry. <laughs> you definitely seem to be uh, interested in the supernatural and the theological and the philosophical, or let's just say theophilosophical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there a reason One for of that? Or, I mean, have you ever been drawn to like theosophical writings or philosophical writings or certain are you writings? are you are you asked me if i if i'm interested in philosophy so yeah in a way um i don't really have like a my hero in there you know okay but you don't have famous art famous author right? i follow some uh, guys you know <clears throat> and uh, i've read of course some of the classic books or so is it more literature and uh like books that inspire you or is also movies it can be anything you know <laughs> i'm not that much in movies i have to say it, yeah, it would be more you. books and so but i'm not that much in movies however <laughs> i see some here and there you know <laughs> well let's talk I mean, about I mean, it's general the general life it's, it's things that i that that i see in my within my friends or so you know things that happen in my surrounding or so you know well, that's just great. I mean, I guess just life in and of itself has been an inspiration for you. But you have definitely written some very thought-provoking, very inspirational, very spiritual, very metaphysical type lyrics. And even Ghosts, I mean, I, that's one of my favorite Rage albums. I know it was not really a big one with the fans and stuff, but um, I, I was going through a lot, of, a lot of stuff at the time spiritually, and I found those lyrics to be very thought-provoking and heartwarming and stuff. Um, exactly, and that, that's a, that's for example. This is inspired by by books from Neil Donald Walsh. I think it's an American writer, one of my favorite <laughs> authors of all time. <laughs> so you're a big fan of Conversation with God. Oh, I'm not a big fan, but I read the stuff. You know, this was an inspiration a bit. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
so so ghost ghost is based on the writings of conversation with god and neil donald walsh yeah not not exactly about this book or so but it's ideas in this book that inspired me you know it's not exactly about this book or so you know <laughs> okay so ideas okay the ideas that he puts forth in the conversation with god series that inspired the the concept album ghost yeah wow no wonder that album touches me so deeply. <laughs> I am a huge fan of Neil Donald Walsh. He's probably one of my favorite authors of all time. Really? Oh, yes. Wow. And I am very versed in the conversation with God. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> the, 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 I don't know what to call it. The, the, theosophy. I mean, it's not philosophy. It's not theology, but it's a combination of both. But there's such wisdom in those texts. And there's really? such there's such life lessons to be found in those texts exactly and it's and it's not this like this uh, kind of typical religion stuff religion you know i don't like i don't like this religion um how to say this uh, this dogmatic stuff you know yeah that's not dogmatic <clears throat> at all well usually you find in this in this religion scenery you know right. he's he's uh, freshly unreligious <laughs> right there, there's but no still, doubt still he he, he knows deeply about uh, this, the very easy secrets of life, you know. You yeah, can you got to wonder. Talk very easily about it and, and, and uh, explain it very easily also, you know. For a homeless man who was ready to commit suicide, who wrote a letter to be able to come up with such wisdom and insight to the universe, you got to wonder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very, very, very inspirational. Well, I got to go listen to Ghosts again now because... That, I definitely was a tough time. I, I had just lost my stepfather uh, right when that album came out, and that album touched me, and it, it, it helped me get through. It was, it was very consoling and helped me get through that. And I never even realized it was Conversation with God. I ever put two and two together, and obviously I had been a fan of Conversation with God. So so wow. that's, inter that's interesting. I, I never thought we would <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 didn't, I didn't see you as in the religion or anything dogmatic or anything that proselytizes or anything that preaches or anything that try to, tries to convince someone that your way is right and their way is wrong. Because that doesn't, I've never seen rage lyrics to be that way. I've no. always seen rage no. lyrics to be like, think for yourself and act for yourself and choose that's the right, right path. That's my, that's my philosophy. I don't believe anybody and that I really think that um, we should everybody should like you say think for yourself this is one of my philosophies you know yeah. <clears throat> but there's a lot of sly people and a lot of people uh, that understand uh, about serious things in life you know and this uh, it's good to just get their message you know and maybe uh, include it in your life or so you know now switching <clears throat> gears before we end this I just want to say how have you kept your voice so I mean because you still have such interesting pronunciation, like the the, the, the video for virginity. <laughs> You've got it rhyming with tears, <laughs> Virginia tears. <laughs> and it's just, I've, it's, I've always, when I hear a rage song, I always recognize the PV style of vocals. And it's always like, how have you kept that for so long? Whether it, it's how you pronunciate, not just because you're German, but just your unique tone and tim timber. How have you kept that for so long? <laughs> Um, I mean, the, my my voice, my vocal style it developed over, I don't know how long I'm doing this now, since, wow, fucking hell, 45 years or so. Yeah. And, of course, this is, yeah, the biggest part of my life, you know. <clears throat> and, of course, this, this, a, this is a, a very long school, you know, where you just get into it, learn about it or so. I just listened today for coincident to some of my old albums, you know. Listen to some stuff from Reign of Fear, and I was like, "What? <laughs> that was that was me back then, you know? Like, sounds a bit different, and it sounds like, yeah, it's a young, this is, you hear a young man, you know, that is not really my, that much experience, you know. And when I hear my, my stuff that I'm doing now nowadays, you know, I'm way more experienced, of course, you know, and to know pretty much what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> we got better technology today as well to help you with all the stuff. But yeah, I just listen. yeah. I don't need all this technology. When I'm in the studio, I can do most of the songs. I can do like first takes or so. You know, I know really? exactly how to do it, and it, it's not that much of, of a work anymore. You know, like it was in the old days or so. Because I just watched the video for Invisible Horizons yesterday, 
and mm-hmm. you with your long hair and your high vocals kind of sounding like uh john from rave and and stuff and it's just like it's like this is incredible and then yeah and of course everything off perfect man and secrets of the world world and trapped and then you know and then you listen to like you say sound changer and sound chaser and unity mm-hmm. and you know just all these just welcome the other side I mean, it's just it's just, it's just it, there's such a progression but then listening to the new EP and just listening to songs like Spreading the Plague and you say, we ourselves are the plague. It's like, there it is. I just, that's that PV style, that vocals that I just instantly recognize. And it, and, and it also <laughs> is very infectious and very catchy and sticks with you. And then you find yourself humming and singing these songs, you know, four hours later. I, I just listened to Resurrection Day the other day too. And it's like, I mean, all those songs, like, oh man, it's like, I can't really think of a Rage album that I disliked because there's always a song that just sticks with me and has such a, you know, a, a value and just meaning. Thank so. you very much. Thank you very much. Is this the, the, the best, um, what is it? Um, yeah, the best compliment you can do. With, you know. <clears throat> well, I, I'm not just a, a journalist. I'm a fan. And I think I'm a fan first and foremost, and then I'm a journalist. And that's why I ask personal questions and try to make it more conversational to the point that I want to make the artist feel comfortable, but I also want to compliment, you know, not be a fan boy, but be, you know, compliment the artist. No, 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 I don't see it like this. And, um, but, but, you know, you know, I see from what you say that you really understand what I'm trying to do. And this is uh, the, the best uh, you, can, you, can, you, you can give me for what I'm doing, you know, because <laughs> uh, uh, what I'm doing this for the music, you know, this, this is nothing to become rich or so, you know. No, oh, no. Yeah, I, yeah. Make, I mean, I, I can make my living with it, you know, but I'm, I never became, a, will become a millionaire from this band or so, or from this music. Um, but uh, I do it for the love of the music, you know, and when, when, when I talk with someone that really understands what I'm doing there, what I'm trying to do, this is, yeah, the best, you know, the <laughs> best for me. Well, and, 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 and you're another icon of the German of the of the German scene, you know, whether it's, you know, Ralph Kasparak for Running Wild or Chris Botendahl from Gravedigger, you know, or Hansi Kosh from uh, Blind Guardian. When us Americans speak to you guys, it's an honor and a privilege because, you know, you might be bigger in Europe, but in, in the U.S., most people haven't heard of, of, you know, they're all fans of Ghost, you know, <laughs> or some other crap. And it's just like, you know, we treasure the time to be able to spend you know listening to this music that this european music that is has such like i said such value and purpose by the way did you notice that ghost the, the band ghost they sound reminds me very much of what we did on on our album ghosts you know <laughs> yeah but your album ghost is far superior than anything the band ghost from sweden could ever accomplish yeah but but from from the way they that the guy writes his songs and the, yeah, and the yeah, sound of the band reminds me really very much of this album you know <laughs> I have to, if I ever meet him, I'll have to ask him if he's ever heard that. He's, I know he's huge in France, influenced by Pink Floyd and Boyster Colt and mm-hmm. stuff like that, but it'd be interesting to see. But, he, you know, he's from Sweden, so it's very possible he's heard Rage and heard that album and, you know, maybe borrowed without asking. <laughs> I know Rage, and I know your lyrics, and I know your Obviously. vocals. And what, what you ask me is really deep into it, I realize. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> well, I... I did not expect to have you know Neil Donald Walsh. That's that just touches me deeply. But I just know the Ghost album is so is so. Well I, I, I wasn't I wasn't aware that that people in the metal scene read this kind of books. You know. <laughs> well, however, that surprises everywhere. <laughs> I might be the exception. Um, before I became a journalist, I pursued a master's in theology. So <coughs> I studied religion for years and years and years, and I abhor organized religion and i cannot stand any of the stuff that people do in the name of religion so when i find books you know that are like the conversation with god and other books of that uh caliber i tend to promote them to let help people you know realize you know like i have a friend right now he, he he's an ex-alcoholic and he thinks the only solution is to convert to christianity because that's what everybody else is telling him to do and i'm like that's not the solution <laughs> I don't agree with AAA AA, and I don't agree with Christianity. <laughs> you know, there's other paths. So, you know, so I'm trying to coach him and help him, you know, find a deeper sense of him, you know, that he could do it himself. 
you know, that he can just, you know, give up drinking and still find freedom and, you know, quote unquote salvation in his own choices and his own purpose. But Mm -hmm. unfortunately in America, this is a very, very Christian and Judaic uh, way the states are set up. And so religion tends to dominate people's thinking, especially as you can see, just watching the news, politics, and it can be very dark and disturbing. Yeah, but but that's a, I think it's a complete abuse of religion, what they're doing there. It is. It is. This is just a power tool that they, where they, how to rule the people, you know, how to manipulate the people. Yes. And, and <clears> violation <throat> of women's rights and violation yeah. of women's dignity and everything else. And it's scary, just, really scary. When I when we when I re- hear about this here in the news or so, it's like, oh, well, fucking hell, going right back to medieval times, you know. <laughs> it is. It is. You Next thing is, will be the Inquisition coming back. <laughs> I think we kind of have the Inquisition. It's just in different forms and different names. Yeah, I, but I okay, we definitely have the Handmaid's Tale, so I mean. You still don't burn the the women, but uh, maybe this gonna come back also. <clears throat> I, I just hope that the women step up, and this fall when we have our when we have our elections, just really come out in droves and show that they want their rights, regardless of what their belief systems are, because mm-hmm. man should not take away women's rights under any circumstances, and you know that's what. Yeah. In America. This, this is human rights. This is human uh, rights. No, I don't. I don't even make a difference anymore between men or women. You know, we're all human be- human beings. You know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this this, sep- this kind of separation. I never understood it. You know. <clears throat> I, exactly. That's one of the key things in conversation with God is that there is no separation. That we're all one. Exactly. And, and it, 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 if, if people could give up the concept of separation and start to, you know, trying to say, you know, you and me instead of saying us, but, you know. That's what I'm writing in a lot of songs, you know, <laughs> that this separation feeling is just an illusion, you know. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's why I, I identify with your lyrics so much, because that's how I think. I think, you know, you know, we are we are one, and, you know, there's more than enough to go around. There's anything any of us need to do. It's 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 all about, you know. Finding, you know, meaning. and then when you, when you are able to see it like this, then you find real freedom. I think. Yeah, you do. <clears throat> you do. And you know, there's there's no such thing as addiction because you know you choose your own path and your own destiny and what you want to do, and then you can do as the Greeks did and use and do not abuse the good things that are given to you in life. You know, so unfortunately, it's. It's preaching to the choir. You and I may agree with that, but the, so many other people, the hoi polloi, the human race, tends to follow the masses and follow, you know, what they're told to do, and then they don't think for themselves. Or they think they think they think for themselves. Yeah. But the, the manipulation is so deep nowadays, you know, and it started already decades ago. You know that that, that <clears throat> actually, I mean, people were always manipulated, but the, this media manipulation. The, the, the industry, the, 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 all this, um, uh, everybody wants to sell something to you, you know, and you, in the end, you, you're just a, a customer you know, for all of the, all of these guys, you know, and um, the, the, most people don't even realize anymore how much manipulated they are, you know. <clears throat> it's like Stefan's other band, Scanner's song, Buy or Die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you must purchase or else. You know, that's you that's what you're here for. You're here to be a consumer. We're all consumer, this, that, or the other. And mm-hmm. that you have no free will as long as you're constantly consuming. You know, I mean it's it's kinda like uh Terry Gilliam's movie Brazil, that we're just all just, you know, just uh, mindless automatons that just can't think for ourselves and you just have to have somebody else guide us on some path and it, you know, I I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 it's sad but true. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but anyway, well, PV, I just still, I mean, I'm going to get, let you get on with the rest of your day. And thank you for sharing, you know, so much intimate. You know, yeah, it was a know. pleasure, Michael. It was a pleasure. <laughs> and hopefully you will come to the States and hopefully we'll get to see you in the States. We have to. We have to make it real. <laughs> yeah, and Saxon would be a great bill because Saxon has been so successful in the United States on their past few tours uh, when they when they toured with Priest. And when they toured with Armored Saints, 
Um, they've been, you know, plus plus they're friends, you know. So we oh, yeah. we know we know each other pretty good, and so it would would be a nice party, a nice travel party. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good times on the on the road, definitely. Yes. Cool. All right. Am I allowed to in this interview uh, talk about your new album? In the you're working on the new album, is that is that on the record or off the record? Um, the new album that you have working that you're working on, the double album. Uh, the the double album, um, yeah. the title. I don't really want to say it right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Because right. we're, we're still in the work in progress, you know. But I'm allowed to I'm allowed to talk about the fact. That yeah, of course working. you can talk about it. It's, it's um, I, I told it already. Plenty of people that. Oh, okay. The so double album, the pipeline. <laughs> I just don't want to, you know, relay or put anything out there that may have been, you know, off the record, so to speak. So, yeah, okay. Well, the title, we'll get to it when we get to it. So, cool. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let me talk well, again. <laughs> thank you again, and I really appreciate you sharing so much. I'll, uh, I'll edit this interview and take out anything that's too personal, but I definitely will stick to the facts. But it was fun that you opened up to me like that. I, that really touches me deep. As, as a fan, I mean, that just really warms my heart because it's like I'm such a huge Rage fan anyway, and to find, and I've always been a fan of your lyrics, and to find that you know that you know we connect on same authors and same levels. It, it just, it's just, it's, it's very intimate. Yeah, <clears throat> it was nice. Also for me, thank you for the interview. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the conversation. All right. All right. Take care. Yeah, take care, Michael. <laughs>